Welcome back. Uh, today's session, I think we'll take a look into how we can get towards reading and writing from Excel sheets. And before that, we need to definitely address the question of what arrays are, what is a one-dimensional array, a two-dimensional array, and maybe a multi-dimensional array. So this concept is critical to understand how we look at data slash information and how we store them, how we primarily do all the CRUD operations. So you create or read data uh, or update what is already there or delete. So anything that you do and data should be uh, these things. So now simplest example of why do I need to read something from an external file? And that becomes a very important concept for us to take a look into. You may have to pause a few sec times in the session. I'm having a bad note once again. All right, team. So, um, from a concept perspective, it is very simple. We're talking about two things out here, or three things. So, the first is the fact that we have something called as variables. In variables, what's most important is the name of the variable and the value that we put into it. And of course, there is a type of the variable associated to it. And also there is memory allocated for that variable. These become important building blocks team. One of the key things that you would notice that all the applications that we eventually want to build using Java or Python, a lot about is, you know, it being 100% defect free like what we want it must do exactly that see for example when i gave you the assignments certain times when we change the input data the output was not coming as we expected that's a challenge the second thing so they want all things to be accurate the second thing that they want is the speed speed in terms of execution so they want things to run faster they want it to be as fast as it can because sometimes at least at the beginning of our um, IT evolution team that was very like 90s and 80s thing there was humongous data and that computing power in terms of you know CPU uh, processing power our RAM space all this was um, very very limited so it required a humongous amount of data so it required too much of searching sorting searching giving us information so it was slow so speed to give us results so when you log into an application it should not tell us after two or three minutes that oh login successful or you're validated it should tell us very quickly as fast as it can the better it is for that application it wants it to be accurate it wants it to be faster in terms of speed and it wants it to use minimal resources everyone and keep that in mind please take notes team at your end because i don't get to take notes i don't write them so much other than speaking but you must take notes. resources in the time in the sense that primarily there is memory team our memory is all about what we do a random access memory and our read only memory these are the two ones that have uh, this specific thing with memory now whenever we write a program and we allocate any variable that specific program let us say p1 is using is your cpu power so for example i'll give you a very simple example for all of you team i hope i have something here to run now so 
So here is the Java application, which is showing you. Okay. Now, if I go to my right click on my taskbar and go to task manager, all that I'm showing is very critical team. You see this, it's saying right now 65%, 59% CPU memory, so on. And let me say close this. Maybe there'll be a subtle improvement, very subtle. But the same thing, if I start the execution of it. So earlier I was not executing. Now this time I will start the execution and see what happens to these numbers here, which is already overloaded because I did not close a lot of Windows applications in the previous few days or maybe a week or so. So let's do a simple execution of this and observe what happens here. Do you see that 50% has gone to 85%, 93%, 91%, then 71%. So your central processing unit, your CPU, is getting overloaded with this Java application. So let us say if I'm running three or four such instances parallelly, it is overloading my application, my system, my hardware. So it becomes important for us to be able to see how the execution is going, how much capacity is using. So that is critical. I'm not saying that you have to master that right now. Keep that in the back of it. But we need accuracy. We need it to be fast. And it needs to use as minimal resources as it can. So you're understanding the point? This is for any variable, data, usage. So basically, these are fundamentals of how do I say this? Uh, programming or coding. When we write code, that's what we want. We want our code to do much more than human. It to be much faster than human. And we already have how much memory we can use. So now the same thing I want to talk about one dimensional array and a two dimensional. So you saw a variable. I'll say B1. And it's got a value 134. Now that could be a string or an integer. Let us say it's an integer. And there's a memory to it. Now I have another group of variables called V2 and I'm going to put into it what values team? I'm going to say that they're all integer types and I'll say 1, comma, 3, comma, 2, comma, uh, 100, comma, 10. Let us say these are the values that I put. But this becomes for me an array which in the memory so this has taken one memory spot or location which we also call as bytes and so on bytes now when we talk about arrays memory location when we create it Okay. It will say, oh, how many items do I want? One, two, three, four, five. It will say, I will create five variables side by side. And hence, you cannot change the size of an array. You get into lists at that time. And then, let us say this memory is there. So this is zero, one, two, three, four. So these are memory keys. Now, what happens if I want to store information somewhere? Let me talk about something that you'll enjoy. Maybe. So far, theory was done. Let's talk about something more practical. Let's say I create a simple Excel sheet. Okay. okay. It's opening, I guess. It looks like my tests are still running to execution on that Java application. The reason I was showing you is when the tests are running, that's what is happening. If I go and happen to kill that process, okay, the overall 
processing and everything will come down significantly because I'm killing those Java applications. And of course, my system requires a good restart overall. Uh, but see, it's getting more control now that I killed some of those old tasks. Okay. We, this is not necessary for us right now. We don't need this new sheet. Now I have a column called X. I have a column called Y and I have a column called Z. To start with, I'm going to put a number here and let's say 10 and 20 or 30 and I want 40. And I want 20 and 50. I don't know how much. I want 11 and I want 12. I don't know how much. I want 15, I want 16, and I want to know how much. Now, everyone, please participate with me for exactly 60 seconds of your time and tell me exactly what the answers will be. Here is how I'm going to ask you the questions, and here is how you're going to reply. Please focus on what I'm saying and how I'm going to ask. I'm going to say the column numbers starting with A, B, or C, and the row numbers starting with 1, 2, 3, or and keep your chat messages interactive with me. I just want to see your answer. Now, what is in column B and three? So I'm asking B column and row three. What is there in that? There can be only one correct answer. So that's our B. Three. Oopsie. Sorry. Three. So wherever these two meet, that's our value. Perfect. Now, what is in C to everyone? Excellent. Fantastic. So that's correct. It has to be 40. Four zero. It, it is actually 40 and we know why because this is my C and this is my 2. Right? Now, what should be there? What should be there is my question in uh, D4. So looking at the pattern of what we are doing, what should be there in D4? <laughs> Can I tell you all the answers that I got? It is a write it down thing. Okay, the small note. The first answer I got was 23. The second answer I got was nothing. The third answer I got was 33. Then 23. Then nothing. And then sorry. <laughs> 14. 23, 13, 35. What was the question, T? How could anyone make a mistake in this? See, we are jumping the gun. You all made a mistake because you skipped your tests. Or steps, not tests, but steps. You did not perform the steps, T. You did not perform what I asked you. How clearly did I show you? Now, let's do that same thing. I'll use a different color now. Maybe orange. There is D. Oopsie. Sorry. I'm able to draw. One second. No, I'm not going to draw anymore on this. It's a go to webinar defective. But here is my D. And where is four here? So where are we looking at the cell? What is there in a T? There is nothing. There will always be nothing because there's nothing that we calculated for. So be clear on that. Now let us think. So this is nothing black. How about C5? Last question for you. What is there in C5? Looking at the pattern, Z seems to be an addition of 10 and 30. Let us resume. 
is only 15, 16, 17 is not an incorrect answer. Let us say it is just a sum. Now if I write z equals x plus y, that is what it is. Then c5 will be, and Excel will actually help me make that automation. I can just write here equals to this cell, which is A3 plus this cell, which is B3, and the value 70. Now, when I copy this, that is the formula that I'm copying, and it will give me those results accordingly. Okay. Now, with this, I can always create more questions into it. Now, what I want is I want to save this Excel sheet as math one. And I'm not going to put any values into it. And in fact, I'm going to save it as dot Excel as for now. I'll explain to you the difference primarily, it'll be easy for you. So uh, XLS is an older version of Microsoft Office, 97 to 1997 to 2003. Then came the latest one, XLSX. Uh, but a lot of plugins or jars that we will use may be okay with .xls. So it's okay, team, just to switch between, we'll try something with a simple form. Now I have a challenge. Let's look at the challenge. The challenge is, I have deliberately not yet gone deeper into classes or list hash maps, tuples, and so on. We will be doing so J19 re Excel. Okay. So see what happens for us, team. And this is very, very critical. The exercise that we have has to be broken down. That if you don't do this step, what I'm currently talking about then high chances you will fail in the overall approach or face challenges that you have spent too much time. First thing, understand and write down English. Is that clear, everyone? Can you at least write the correct English that other humans can understand? This is code logic of what you have to do. And this is step zero, not even step one. Now comes our step one. What is it that we want to do? I have, when is that Excel? Okay, let's see. Path one. I believe this is the one. This is an Excel version. I'm going to save this as math to just in case there's a little confusion which one what and save and just add one more row here so that way uh, we know we're using the current ones. This is math too. Now my logic is very simple. Read the data in column A and B in Excel and put the sum in Z. Now, is this my step of what I want? Is, are these the steps of my program or logic execution team? What is this that I wrote? Because I've seen how in all of you are approaching your programming, and I believe that approach needs to be correct. You have to write it on English. I'm asking a question, team. Is this a rep what is this? Is it a step one of the steps? It is your assignment, let us say, your overall project or your requirement. Okay. This is all that you've got. Now you are creative enough. You are a computer science engineer or you know IT, you've been trained. You need to understand this. Any human will understand this, right? Read the data in column A, in column B, in Excel and put the sum in Z. Not in Z, in column C and so Where is it? Excel is here. This is column A, this is column B, column C. Now, how does 
a computer which has no clue about it do it one i have to talk to it like giving very baby instructions to so baby steps you need to write all the baby steps first one where is my excel second read the data from excel three <clears throat> uh, perform the job four write the result back to excel save close and end my program now this process is very important team and that is where we should not get lost in the world of arrays what you're seeing right now is called a one dimensional array think of an excel sheet like this which has got you know all data into one row like all our names for example so i write a here b here c here b here and and everything is in one row so my column will never sorry row will never change only the column is change now then comes a concept of two dimensional array so what happens in certain cases is you cannot hold data in just one floor think of it simple like your apartments okay your apartment on first floor will start with maybe 101 102 103 then this will be 201202203303030 clear everyone so at this point when a postman comes in he or she is basically looking at the overall street address once they come to the street address when they go to that elevator and before they press that button to catch that elevator to go up or down which one floor should they press they know it first floor or second floor or third floor just based on that detail so this is my row 1 row 2 row 3 this is my column 1 column 2 column 3 so i am able to differentiate how my information can be stored team so it can be divided now the advantage is all the entire apartment block for this array is using one name okay. so to put that information into perspective i'll just uh, simply give you um code for a two dimensional array i'm sorry yeah looks like i don't know how much i'm able to do justice to explain this let's understand before we do that two dimensions let's say 20 underscore 2d so two dimension is nothing but the fact that there will be rows and columns 1d as only x axis or rows 2d sorry not one day dimension two dimension as x and y axis so what is x and y axis when we look at simple diagrams i hope i'm able to draw it yeah. so this is my x axis and this is my y axis so this is 1 2 3 values here 1 2 3 so if i have to say x is 2 and y is 3 my point will end up here so that's how i can use an axis to locate now if i take that and add an another dimension into it as a spatial that becomes a z axis 
So humanly, we can easily understand up to three axes. Fourth axis as our fourth dimension as time and space can also be added, but we cannot visualize it so easily. This is primarily two dimensions between X and Y. Three dimensions, just to create the perspective, has X, Y, and Z axis. So any little orientation to mathematics, you'll be able to relate what I'm saying. And we have multi-dimension. Okay. Now, the concept is very simple. If I say in of x equals, uh, what can I put the values in here? You remember the arrays that we were using earlier? So here, you said Bob, Samantha, and so on, right? So let's create a first a regular one. Where am I? Okay, int x of. Okay. Let's create a one dimension array first. Okay, so if I say x of zero. I know I'm going through almost the whole thing again, team of. I just print this. So I know what is in my each position. So if I say for some i in x, I'm missing the whole thing. There's a for loop. Uh, I didn't do any of this other first, is it? First strings and all that. I've not covered strings also, team for us. That's fine. Never mind. Yeah. Um, let's just print a few of them. X dot. Let's get the length of it. I'll basically print the ID zero i is less than x dot length i plus plus. And this basically is navigating through my entire um, and here I say in i. So, and I'm not hard putting it to zero, I'm keeping it as high. So, my basic code when I run this will give me all those values that are there in that length of it. Now, the same thing that we were trying to create, if I put this data in an Excel. Tim, can you hold me, hold with me for a second, please? I'm getting a couple of calls. Okay. Uh, where am I trying to do? I just want to quickly pull this up. Uh, I'm getting this X and Y from here. Read Excel and Y. I need to take. Let me. All right. Give me a second. Um, for this, what I'm going to use, team is a pre-written method that I already know that works fine with Java and so on. So there is a method that I'm specifically interacting to read with the Excel file. Uh, so let me take one of the previous trainings. Um, maybe it's a bit March. Katie would have it for sure. I'm sorry, it doesn't have this here. 
Let's quickly look in source drivers. Ah, it's a Tim, I'm sorry, I'm, I had to take a quick um, deviation also to think through what I'm doing here. So this is a really Excel, right? It's, this is good. So now let's talk about from an Excel perspective. Team. This is okay for single dimensional. Area. Now, when I want to read an Excel, it typically the data is going to come to me in a two dimensional. Area. So whatever I put, irrespective of the content there, the values will still come to me as a string. So this will always remain to be a two dimensional array. And let us say, I'll call this as my Excel. So my Excel, I want to hold the data that I read from Excel. Now, a couple of things that I need to definitely put a string Excel path, and let's make sure that we give that right away. Uh, do I have it anywhere else? Yeah. So I have this. What? I copied. Slash slash math two dot Excelus. Everyone with me, team? I'm slowly building this up so you can easily understand. Now, primarily, my Excel should be equal to all the data in that Excel sheet. So, what we did is we created a reusable method. So, here is my main method. And let's create one more method here specifically to read Excel. Think of it this way. A reusable function that is there in a box. You say where that Excel file is. You say what is the name of that sheet. And it will give you back the two dimensional array. Why is it two dimensional? Can anyone tell me now, please, once again? Why is an Excel sheet two dimensional? You're right, thank you. Why is an Excel sheet two dimensions? You're right, Shiva. Come on, guys. One dimension, two dimensions. Exactly, because we have rows and columns, and hence two of them, two facts. Okay. Now, where were we? What just happened? I wrote code right. I'm writing somewhere else. What's writing this thing? I'm sorry, I'm just thinking where is the code that I'm just writing? I don't know something. Oh, there you go. <laughs> so that's back now. Okay. So now basically my Excel should give me that information. For me to get here, I will basically create a reusable function that takes path and sheet and gives 2D array containing Excel data. And to do this, I'm going to walk you through a code. I will not 
write this code. I will not expect you to remember or master this code. It is just about reusing this code. Let me copy this, the simple one, and get it. Then I will write Excel. I don't think anything is needed as of now. Let me put this. Now, everyone. So let's talk about the concept of what these external jars are, and it was important for me to introduce. Uh, so Java is a core language, and so is Python, and so on. Now, Java doesn't come inbuilt with everything in it. It basically gives you the platform, and it says whatever you want on it, you can build. Whatever you want, you can build. You can build different types of applications. Banking, medical industry, automotive, whatever you want. Now, there are contributors that come into Java. The contributors are coming in from different segments. Right? They have a lab and they wrote something. I use Selenium and I want to do something using Java. I wrote any art. I want to use something with Java. I know how to read and write from an Excel and I want Java to be able to use. So when you go, you download Java. When you want, you download the additional packages called as your Java, so Java, run, uh, Java archive resources. These jars are nothing but a bunch of reusable libraries or distributed link libraries. So whenever we want, we can call them. Any application can be built over the same one. So in this case, what we're using is called as Apache Pure. So for this, Apache POI, Apache has got a lot of open contributors to widely Java developer communities. Like you and I, we felt, oh, you know what, someone would benefit using so and so in this poi stands for poor obfuscation interface i'll tell you the background of this hssf stands for i'm not expecting you to remember any of these right away keep it in your notes hyper actually what am i saying not hyper i wish it was much more better horrible Red sheet format. These are the actual names to what they are. And all this came is because developers do not are not Excel friendly. They don't like Excel too much. So if you want to interact with Excel, okay, here you go. But most humans are Excel friendly. So that's where the divide comes. So if we want to use it, then we use this libraries. So we're using Apache POI, HSSF, JAR resources or libraries to interact or read like with MS Excel. Okay? That is what we do. So the method that we have here is called read Excel. Read Excel has a bunch of um, commands. We will look at it, but think of it as a simple method to begin with. The first job there is that what is the name of the method? Read Excel. I'll ask quick questions. Can everyone keep a buzzer on your chat and interact with me? Because now we get into the depth. Answers have to be accurate. How many inputs are going going inside this uh, Read Excel? method what are the how many inputs are going in okay ask everyone you don't need more than five seconds to answer that and all of these questions that you're answering thing basically i'm able to observe your names see who's able to answer who's not and seeing who's interacting as well if you're here i expect you to please answer Come on, everyone. What does it take for you to put your answer? 
That's correct. Two. We have FR and FC. Now, how many outputs do we get from it? So what is telling something about it? We have two inputs. How many outputs do we get? How many outputs do we get? The answer is one. All of this is referring to one instance of one array of whatever. Inside that, there could be more data. So that is all that it is referring to. It will at the end has to return a two dimensional array of type string. That is its job. Clear so far? Those are the first things that you need to look at from a method standpoint. Why do you think it is saying throws exception? Can someone tell me now? We're not even looking inside the function what it is doing. We have yet to look at it. That's a good answer. If no file found, might not find file, correct? Very good thing. Or it could not open file, or maybe no data. We never know. Maybe out of bounds exception. Sure, you're right. All of you are right. Team about it. So we don't know where it is. And how do we handle it? Using our Exception handling, try catch blocks. Okay. Very good. Now let's go inside the method. You see how I slowed down everyone? I've totally slowed down my pace because these are important concepts. I am again telling you, I don't expect you to remember or master this code. You can copy and use them as they are or make certain changes. All you need to do is the logic. So string two-dimensional X data. What does it mean? X data now is a two-dimensional string that is absolutely empty. There's nothing inside. All right. Now, what we're doing is we're saying integer X rows X columns. Again, no values. String cell value, nothing into data format. This is something that I just imported. So this is basically giving another access for me to format how my data looks. Uh, these, you know, if it's, an, if it's a member or it's text or an alphanumeric or a formula and so on. So just simple, use it as is because we want the raw data. So I don't see anything that is related to it that I can input. Do you see this? The same with, I don't know, maybe others, but let's look at file. Import a regular file, java.io. You saw this earlier. All I need to give is the file part. What does file input stream mean, the mean team? They're opening the file to read data. Okay, so this also I'll import. This is good. Now comes HSS of workbook or HSS of sheet. So far, team, whatever you needed was kind of inbuilt into our existing libraries. Now we are progressing towards advanced waters. And there could be many, many contributors to it. So if everyone wants to contribute into it, they cannot put everything into one vehicle and send it. So what we need to do is import what we need at any given time. So at this point, let's go quickly to, where am I even taking the notes? Apache, come on. I'm gonna do a very quick, just a Google search, Apache, POI, Jar download or just is a jar. So we're basically looking for this thing. That is what we need to download. And I'm going to the latest version from this specific link. 
Something is not. Oh, and here comes the latest stable version is PUI 4.1. So let me show you what we do. It is going to be very simple. I'm going to take that dot zip one. Binary distribution is enough. You just want the zip file that has the jar library. So I'm getting this uh, downloaded onto my local machine. Once I do that, I'm going to tell you how we can associate. So primarily the difference, if you take your mouse over, it does not know what is HSS of workbook or sheet. A lot of these specific keywords. Now, what I've downloaded is primarily containing that what we do. So I'm going to open this web Windows Explorer. And do you see this POI folder there? I think this executable chart itself should be enough, right, team? I don't know if there's anything else that I require. I'll quickly look into just in case. Uh, on my other machine also, what do I have as versions? C colon drivers here. POI 4.5. I think this is the only one. So I copied that one and I have a driver's folder here. I'll paste this team. I already have a 4.10. There seems to be a latest version 4.12. Try and take the latest version, it will help us. Okay. Some of these other things I've not come to, or you may have to go through as a videos. But let's get back to my Java code. At this point, it still does not recognize unless. And here is where you should learn how to associate external jar libraries to our project. So right click on the project, go to your properties, and what you're primarily looking at your Java build path. So when we're compiling our program, if you look at all these libraries that are there in this section and see, hey, you know what? For that code, you can use this library because it has to know what method and all that to open. So here there's only the system Java runtime environment that is pre-built. I'm going to add that external ones. And the ones that I saved it locally into C drive, a common folder called drivers. I'm looking at POI 412 and say, Apply and close. So it's just a link to that. And now when I take my mouse over, hopefully, it should say import this. And it has already got where this is in my imports. So once I add it, you'll see that import statement coming. The same for HSSF sheet as well. Okay. Data format, and now let's see. That is also rebuilt with an Apache POI. So let's input that as well. And predominantly, there's one more row. Every other kind of uh, syntax error that we observed earlier is now disappearing. Okay, so what are we doing? I have main thing here, I have this and this. Now, this it's taking a path and the name of the sheet, it will go through that navigation. So just as a layman terms team for now. <clears throat> Are you with me? I'm going to read the code out loud so that you can sync up just the understanding factor. Okay. So first and foremost uh, thing team in this is we gave inputs. Where is my Excel file? What is the name of the sheet? Now, what we're doing here is nothing but initialization, which is saying, where is my file? I want to open it for input. I know it is of a workbook, Excel workbook type, and I want a specific sheet in that workbook. 
using this get sheet method on my workbook. And then I have two variables, x rows, x columns. It will tell me exactly the number of rows and columns in it. Now let us say I want to print them as well. So I'll print here rows are plus x rows. Right? Small things you should all be able to do things. And it's columns. Columns are so it basically is saying get last row number at one count starts from zero at this whole point here. Yeah. Now in this case, it's saying get the first row and then go to the last cell. That tells me how many columns are there. That is what are the inbuilt features of functionality that Apache PO HS is in. Then comes X data, which basically creating here a 2D array for that size. So I know how big I want because that is what it is. So I'll put a size of this. Create a new blank, 2D blank, a blank 2D. Okay, now comes the logic, very simple. Two for loops, go through each row, go through each column, take the value of the cell, Put it into the two-dimensional array i j. This is how we'll get the value of what is the row, what is the column. And that's it. So each time I can also print it and say what is that cell value. And if I run this now. What will happen to you? At this point, I'll say, so start my code. And so end my code. So what do I hope to see? Let's see. It's been so long just to explain a little bit on the Excel. I know read Excel, write Excel in Java and Python. I should have completed. Somehow I felt I should slow down. It. Start of my code one, two, three, four. What is this one, two, three, four? Anyone? Is it coming from? It's coming from here. Can someone please tell me very, very clearly why it did not print our rows and columns here and also the cell values here? Why it did not? my main method and I have my read Excel. These are the only things that are there. So there's import statements. Look at how the blocks are. It is my main class and there's a main method. Every Java program has to have a main method. And whatever other methods I want, I can keep them. I can call them. Why has it not done anything else? Data formatted, you need Satya because you need you get data sometimes as a formula, as a reference to another cell, or it's in a different format altogether. You want to be able to get that in a string version. That's why we need data format. My question is why is it not reading from that Excel? Right. Cheat name not mentioned. Right. Excel code must be within the main method. No, the Excel code should not be. This is an Excel method. Read Excel is a method. Method should be called. So unless you call read Excel, so if I say string, my Excel. Did I always already create something called string my Excel? It is here, right? So now if I say my Excel equals read Excel 
and open brackets. What is it that I present? The path and the sheet. What is the name of the path team? Excel path. I already have it. What is the name of the sheet? Let's make sure. Sheet one. I'll say it is sheet one and semicolon. Now, at this point, maybe it will get everything. What do you think is the problem here? Definitely one method throws an exception. Where are you calling from it? Even it can throw an exception. So that's something we have to specifically add into it. Um, what else? So at this point, T, if I put a breakpoint here, you know what? So my <laughs> one bit almost the same once here. Where did it have an issue? I'm just trying to look at this. Um, one second. Sheet is there, now math2.xls. So now we're looking at what is throwing this exception team. Uh, one, two, three, four, K, that's fine. And I'm trying to see where in our code did it fail. 933. Read Excel. Okay. I have Read Excel here. String path and string sheet. Here. And then within Read Excel, line 56. So I go here. And what is it basically trying to say? I hope I saved this. Save this and let's close this. Say no. no. Let's rerun team because that Excel, I was not sure if it was open or not. Now, the only thing that I'm thinking of is is the path correct? Math2.excel is there. Let's see. C driver. Did we put that in training? Let's look at view as details. And math2 is there, dot xls. What did I give math2.xls? Trying to figure where the issue is to Let me look at it. This has got nothing to do with what we're doing, so I'm going to say what this has. J21 underscore read Excel. And I don't need some of this content. This is what I have. So I know exactly where the issues can be key. Excel path. Sheet one, string sheet. Do anyone see something that I'm not seeing? Thank <laughs> you. 
have some. <clears throat> I'm doing the declaration and the initialization in the same month. Let's see the address that it says. Hmm. You're right, it says Mac 3 weekends. This is actually a different one. I don't think it is our Mac thing. It's not Let's run this as is. We will be able to uh, close that and identify what the issues. Okay, so this has to be refactored. Let's do that, save and rerun. I'm sorry, team, I know why it is. <clears throat> there is one more driver I need to import here. And that driver is this simple math ones called common IO driver will be there somewhere. See, um, I think Hamcrest common IO. There you go. See, so this is the other one that I would need to for my read and write Excel. So let's repeat the same process. Just quickly read through, then I realize what I'm doing. Properties, Java build path, Apache POI, we already did. Similarly, there will be another common IoT. In fact, if I'm not wrong, when you unzip the version that we got from downloads, it may have the same thing. You need just one more driver called the common IO. You can also search for it, um, you would be able to find it. So I'm trying to associate that with our workspace. Done. I've associated that by adding external jars and apply and close. And now let us try to rerun this code. Come on. <laughs> let me search. So this, when I downloaded, it gave me that Apache POI open with Windows Explorer open library. See, library is what I take. The Commons Math also is there, and Commons IO also is there. So let me take this Commons Math also theme and put it here. I think that is the one which is linked with, especially the data format, either a formula or anything like that. This may be the required charge for thinking. Let's just make sure that that's correct working. I click properties. So there's Apache POI. I don't know about this one. I deleted that. I have a new one. Let me add this and see. Maybe. Maybe I might have to require. Okay. It is now the code works team. I have to still validate to make sure everything is correct. So six rows, three columns, x, y, z is equals to x plus y. So you see it's printing all the values that I have there team, from our Excel sheet. And these prints are coming because in my read Excel, I also gave those print statements. I have this print statement of rows are. So that filters to debug to make sure that it is working correct. And the same, we're doing it here. Where, see, each time if I say print, it'll print into a new line. Team. So if I just say print like this and maybe give a divider after this, print ln is primarily into a new line. So what we will do is we'll print the value, we'll give a space. And finally, once it is done, I will print nothing. So let me run this. So from a formatting and presentation perspective, we'll get an idea. And see what it is doing in X, oh. What, so value, Achha, okay, got it, sorry.
after each loop after each call the third yeah so after each row then i give a space so that way my output will be something like this so x is the column so and so y is the column z equals x plus y it's actually getting me the formula thing that is there not the actual value you have to be careful about this and make sure it comes out um and looks okay from the end overall what's happening and i don't need all of this data now the whole point is to make something out of it and also put it back so i need to go through the iterations so i'll say for in i is equal to zero see what i will do i will go through each row first i is less than total rows and i plus plus that will let me navigate through each row now once i go to each row i also want to go through each column for in j equals 0 team will you all minimum practice how much i'm doing as coding you should all at least practice that much please j is less than columns and so colon j is plus and now primarily i have a loop all i need in this case is so my excel square brackets i and square brackets j i want that value then and same like what i am doing there same So this is a test team, only to make the UI presentation look fancy, nothing more. And hit a empty line after every row. So that's all I'm. As of now, I'm reading it, but I know where my data is. My data can always be accessed by saying which row, which column. and that's the advantage so when i do this i have a, okay print print end of my code yes so for something is not correct let me fix it look Yeah, once I finish in this, I'll explain in Python as well. Python could be much simpler. But let me try to see. So I'm going to comment the ones from the previous that we don't need. And even here, see, it's all about debugging team, running the code again, trying to look at what's right, what's wrong. So X, Y, Z, and then why is it not going to the next line? It's because I'm doing it after all the fun. I should do it ideally here. Now I think it should be good. So we should be able to get the data in here. So for me, the value of z is always nothing but. Let us say there is something called the skin z. At least locally, I can maintain a variable called int z. and z is always nothing but um x what do we have to do for all of these of these problem mark so it's very simple i column zero plus i column 1 so each time my row number will change but this is column zero column 1 so column 0 column 1 i'll add those two that gets into z now i can print z so this has to be converted 
Java string to int. So a lot of times you need to work on conversion scheme. When you have a value that is returned as a string, but it actually has a number in it, all you can do is just say parse int or uh, and pass that string into it to be able to get that value. To you. So integer dot percent, or I can also do integer dot value of. So here I'm going to say integer pass in of this. So that basically converts it into integer before and the same here. And now I can safely print so what new line? Actually, I can do a new line after that. There we go. You can add in 20 minutes just to explain some basics of the I did some mistake. Let's see. First, did main X, member format exception for input string X, which line, line 28. Integer dot past. Give them a string to an integer in Java. Okay, that's what I'm doing. To and all of this team, um, a good, quick Google search is always handy for us. So please don't have to overcomplicate what you remember, what you don't. Just make sure that it has the value. So I'm kind of initializing this and what is the error? Exception in thread, number format for input string, unknown source. What do you mean it's an unknown source? Big, big, big. J0. Oh. No. In that case, I'll actually show you this logic again tomorrow to you. See, then I don't need the inner loop for loops in this case, because I'm specifically going and printing what I want. I'm saying, I don't need this too, this does not exist. I don't care what was there. I'll just say value of Z is. Each time. So this is at least the bare minimum code for us to be able to explain it. Now, end of my code, x value of z, and z. Let's see. Actually, let this see come towards the end. Let's see if that too much. Uh, number format exception for input string, blah, blah, blah. For input string, blah, blah, blah. Read Excel, Java 28. Okay. My Excel I zero. Oh yes, because I tell you why T for input string X. Very simple. All this is caused by an extremely silly error. And I'll tell you. The first row that we have, okay, is X, Y, Z, right? So X cannot be converted into an integer. That is the problem. N can be, X cannot be. So the first row is the column names. I don't want the count to start from the first row. It should start from the second. So that's most critical for me. So this I equals to zero is the problem. I equals to one should solve this for us. I equals to one, I is less than X rows. Okay, where is it still going? Row one second, something I'm not doing correct in this. Which program am I running? 
See, this is the problem. J21 is for read X. Save it first. Save, save. Then run as. And then it this value of Z is 40, 70, 23, 31, 60, based on what we gave as inputs. 40, 70, 23, 60, 31, 60. Now, how do we write that back? Is the next part. Uh, for that, we have one more function. I just need to say where to write it and how to write it. And then it will do its job. Okay. So we'll look at that tomorrow and also do the same in Python. I'll kind of simplify this process now. So the error that was coming is basically because in the Excel sheet there was no, there's no data in my row one. So how can I convert this into a number? I could work on the actual data content. And I got what I wanted only to my output concern, not put it back into the sheet. Look into that. But I'm so tired. I have a meeting now starting exactly now. How is it going for you all? Uh, please back this and uh, I'll see you back tomorrow then. I know it's intense uh, when you kind of do programming one by one. It's just, it's fun as long as you can understand the basics of it. Keep going slow and slow. Thank you so much, everyone. Very, very tired at my end for today. I'll see you all back. Um, and actually, just for your information team, JPAC members, climatic uh, meeting starting soon. So I'll jump into it. Skype, I'll put that link. Most of you will have that. Thanks, everyone. See you in the next session. Thank you.